but we will go back to uh, some more uh, basic stuff. So, we have been talking of a heat pump which can be reversed to run as a heat engine or a heat engine which can be reversed to run as a heat pump and so on. So, we have in this a concept of reversing something, so which means that the processes are reversible. So, it means for example, if I can go from say some point 1 to some point 2, I should be able to go back in the other direction but with some other conditions. So, the definition of reversible process is it is a process that once having taken place like say going from 1 to 2, it can be reversed go from 2 to 1 and in doing so leave no change in either the system or the surroundings. So, it is easy for example to go from 1 to 2 as far as the system is concerned and go back from 2 to 1 with only the system being uh, taken into account, but in that process things outside might change. So, if that kind of a thing happens it is not reversible, it is only reversible if when going for example from some point 1 to some point 2 and you go back from 2 to 1 nothing outside has changed. So, what we see is that a reversible process has the maximum efficiency, we see the reason why and we also see that rapidly occurring processes <coughs> sorry, cannot be reversible. A reversible process should be quasi static, should be very slow, but we also see that non all not all quasi static processes are reversible. So, we require the reversible process to be quasi static because what we see is for example, in sudden expansion or something like that, we it is not resisted and if it is not resisted we do not get the full amount of work in those kind of processes. So, therefore, the reversible process needs to be quasi static which means it needs to be slow we need to be very close to equilibrium all the at all points of time, so that we can go in either direction, but not all quasi static processes are reversible and the factors which make these processes unreversible irreversible are things like say friction. So, for example, if I am trying to sort of move my hand on this computer screen as I move from left to right there is friction and because of friction there is some heat generation and some energy is lost. Now, when I move it back in the other direction there is once again friction and once again there is heat generation and some energy some kind some of the kinetic energy which I have in moving my hand is lost to the environment as heat. So, friction works against my force in both directions and I lose some amount of energy in both directions so my system loses. So, it creates uh, irreversibility similarly with unrestrained expansion. So, for example, we discussed that if we want to have a process even an expansion process. So, what we discussed earlier is for example, if we put a single big block I have some gas here if I remove this block suddenly it expands fast and that is not reversible because for example, if I remove this block suddenly the piston has gone up let us say I slide this block in somehow. Uh, it is it is only a thought experiment I need to have these walls of the piston here, so that this piston can go up, but let us say I slide this somehow onto some stand. So, I slide this block off this goes here now if I want to reverse it the block has to go on top. So, the question is how do I get the block on top, so I need to raise the block which means I am doing some work to bring it on top and then it will come back here. So, this would come back again to where it was, but in this process I have done some work in lifting this block up and I cannot get that work back. So, this would be an irreversible process, but what we discussed is a way of making this process reversible even assuming that there is after assuming there is no friction this would still be irreversible if I move this block suddenly, but a way of making this reversible is if I had really tiny tiny blocks. So, let us say I have some surface here. I slide off one block and then this moves up slightly then I slide off the next block. So, I slide one block here they are frictionless blocks I slide one block the piston moves up slightly now I can slide the next block horizontally. So, I do not do any work in moving these blocks horizontally because they have the same potential energy and there is no friction I am assuming I do not have any friction in moving my hands there is no air around and all of those, but then I can slide off block by block 
and then this piston will slowly go up and then when the piston has gone up I will essentially the topmost block here will be at the height of the piston so I can slide it back onto the piston the piston will move down I can slide back the next block onto the piston and so on so if I do it in that fashion then I can essentially have a reversible process assuming there is no friction so it needs to be a very slow process it has to be restrained expansion so in the limit of these blocks being so thin that they do not ha they have hardly any mass I have an infinite number of blocks I will slide off each I can essentially get I can think of a reversible expansion process. Another thing which causes uh, irreversibility is essentially heat transfer through a finite temperature difference uh, this is actually quite uh, in some sense strange because when you talk of heat transfer what other kind of heat transfer do we have because we when we need heat transfer we typically need a temperature difference to transfer heat you could of course think of isothermal heat transfer where you have the same temperature and heat is being transferred which we can sort of achieve in case of say condensing media but in general what we see is we need a temperature difference to transfer heat but this is irreversible because for example if I had a hot substance and I transferred heat out to the atmosphere the temperature becomes of the substance become lower but in order to transfer substance uh, heat back from the cooler substance to the hot substance according to the Clausius statement I need to do work so in transferring from a hot object to a cold object I can transfer this heat easily but if I want to reverse this transfer I want to transfer heat from a cold object to a hot object according to the Clausius statement of the second law of thermodynamics I need to do work so in one direction I can I can transfer the all of the heat in the other direction I need to do work therefore this process is not reversible so therefore anything which involves heat transfer between two objects at different temperatures is essentially an irreversible process a lot of chemical reactions for example combustion where I take like for example uh, petrol which consists of a lot of hydrocarbons I burn them it burns very easily if I take all the products and keep them back I cannot get back what I had in any easy fashion so those are essentially irreversible processes so what we see is that in order to have reversible processes we need slowly occurring processes so that they are quasi static if there is any heat transfer it should be through a negligible temperature difference so ideally with like isothermal heat transfer or any temperature difference will be so small that it is mostly reversible and the processes should be fully resisted so we saw that for example we saw earlier in the discussion on work for example you have somebody with a parachute it is fully resisted then there is you can have work done if it is not resisted there is change in kinetic energy but there is no work done so those kind of processes uh, are not re reversible but we also should not have friction which means that uh, things should slide we should not have friction which means that gases cannot have viscosity so all of those are requirements in order that the processes are completely reversible we further classify these reversibilities or irreversibilities as internal and external so we see a process is internally reversible if there is no irreversibility within the boundaries of the system during the process so inside the system if everything is reversible then it is internally reversible so during an internally reversible process a system proceeds through a series of equilibrium states and when the process is reversed internally the system passes through the same equilibrium states while returning back to its initial condition so if we had like a process let us say if we have PV diagram if we draw the pressure versus volume inside we measure the pressure and volume of the system let us say it goes from some 1 to 2 and when we reverse if it goes back exactly to the same states it retraces its path then we say that the system is internally reversible a process is externally reversible if no irre irreversibilities occur outside the system and what we see is that for example if you have heat transfer between a reservoir and the system it is an externally reversible process if the outer surface of the system is at the temperature of the reservoir so I want to transfer heat from say a system A and the surroundings or with some other reservoir like this this heat transfer would be reversible if 
the temperature outside is the same as this temperature of this boundary of the system. So that there is no temperature gradient and therefore I can do this temperature transfer, transfer reversibly. So I need that kind of a thing. So if as I transfer system, sorry, if, if as I transfer energy from B to A, the temperature of A increases, this energy transfer would be reversible if the temperature of B also is correspondingly changing along with A so that there is no irreversibility in the heat transfer. There is no finite temperature gradient in the uh, heat transfer which is happening. So some examples of systems undergoing processes are shown here. Uh, this is what is called a Stearin imaging where you can see hot gases rising in a fluid due to refractive index gradients. Uh, this shows a soldering iron. Many of you might have used this to solder for example wires together in a circuit board. So what we see is that in this case the soldering iron is hot. So it is transferring heat from the metal to the gas around and we just saw that this would be a highly irreversible process because the gas becomes slightly warmer but if I kept slightly warm gas and kept a cold soldering iron, I cannot make this iron, soldering iron become hotter by just keeping it in the presence of warm gas uh, or a cooler gas compared to this. So that is irreversible. This shows a Schlieren image again of a gun being fired. So you, you see shock waves and the bullet is gone somewhere here. So again this is a highly irreversible process. You have viscosity, you have shock waves which are travelling you have a lot of noise which is generated, light which is generated and so on, all of which disperse out. So if I had this situation, I cannot have all of this energy coming back to the bullet and the bullet going back into the gun. In advance of this plus I have combustion and so on, so all highly irreversible processes which are happening over here. This is an example I showed you earlier of a dye dispersing in a liquid. So you put some food colouring in water or paint in water or ink in water and you stir it it all mixes up. If you, there is, if you keep stirring it again, it is not going to come back and separate out. So it is a highly irreversible process when it has this kind of mixing of two soluble substances. 